Hey everybody, welcome to Fast Track Coaching. I'm Dane Sanders. This is my friend Mira Co. And it is awesome to be with you guys. Fast Track Coaching is an event, really a, a weekly event, where I get a chance to have conversations with my friends. And I don't always get to do it in person, which is really fun that I'm here in Las Vegas for WPPI and a lot of my friends who are here, um, we get a chance to do this and yeah. have a dialogue. But it's for your sake, if you're watching from home, it's t there's two things. One, if you're watching it live, you can join in the chat because Mira and I will both be there and, uh, and maybe even Brian if you're lucky. And uh, Brian's Mira's husband, and uh, we'll be chatting away with your questions. But this is we'll we'll play this recording then, and then we'll be able to dialogue with you guys live. If you're watching on replay, then you can reach out to either Mira or myself through all the various channels online, and and uh, and we can connect that way. But the purpose of Fast Track Coaching is for us to be talking about our creativity and our business, and hopefully the dialogue will have a ripple effect and be helpful for you guys to move your business and your creativity just a little further this week. Um, one of the reasons why I love having Mira on, and she's been on the show before. Um, and we've been doing this for a while now, is you and your brand have exploded. I mean, it's just remarkable how much ground you've taken, and not just like for you, but the ripple effect on how it's empowered yeah. so many different people. Um, talk a little bit about the evolution of, of Mirako and kind of where you came from and, okay. and where you're today. Okay. <laughs> By the way, we have the giggles, and we have the giggles because, and I might put this at the end of the show, but we have a lot of um, preamble video, but we'll put that on later. So, anyways, go ahead. Okay, so the evolution of Mirako. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was born. I was born to black man. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> how far do we want to go back? Do, I mean, just in the photography well, the, yeah, world? So, yeah, or? I, I know. That's a great yeah. question. So you started off, uh, you were a writer, and yes. then you got into photography. Right. And a lot of folks who are watching this, they know you from the photography world, but you yeah. you have done a, so much more in different directions now, in a new, actually probably a singular direction, but with broader reach. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about what happened in photography that then led to what you're up to right now. Okay. Well... <clears throat> I think that before before I got into photography, I was speaking to women about um, how they could. <laughs> <laughs> That's so perfect. I don't know what you were trying to say just now. Look at the camera. Yeah, talk to the people. Talk to us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 so Brian's in the house. Okay. Oh, right goodness. Right okay. okay, so, well, I think that, bef so before photography, I was writing, I had a book, I was speaking to women, and around the topics of wholeness, self-worth, like rebuilding your life when you've gone through something really hard, um, and so photography then came into my life, and I feel like I feel like we're leaving a whole bunch out, but there's like they, you can look at my website right. and they can read the story and all that um, because it would it would help give context to this. Yeah. But um, I you know I started with portrait photography, then we went into weddings, and when I say we, Brian and I, and uh, sitting behind the camera, and then we you know grew into becoming a boutique studio for high end weddings. And but my heart's always been for women. Right. That's where like that's where my pulse is at, and what gives me just fills me up and so so I started by putting up this post on my blog to do a workshop for moms just mm -hmm. because I wanted actually to go to Italy with Brian for our <laughs> anniversary and we didn't have any money and so I thought you know well I'm just gonna throw this up and see if there's any other moms who are interested because digital had just happened and so there was still like a lot of film people but digital was kind of peaking for moms especially and so uh, in less than 24 hours it sold out and 8 out of 10 moms not like aspiring photographers that right. go to workshops but 8 out of 10 moms were flying in from out of state wow. and it just it totally blew my mind that wow, there's something here. There's women who, uh, like me, feel, feel or at one time felt intimidated by the technology, but their kids are in front of them. They're growing up right underneath their eyes, and they want to capture them. They don't want to deal with, like, the excuse of, I just don't know how to use my camera. Right. They're going to, you know, force themselves to learn. So that is where our workshops kind of started. And so, and then that grew into our confidence workshop, which Brian and I do all over the country now. Uh, but it was one of those things where... I don't know, it was just like, I think, 
you know, we were we were working with Sony, and we still are. But uh, I and we were doing the weddings, and now we were doing the workshops, and we were, and I felt kind of like we're doing so much, I can't see straight, <laughs> you know. And and but like, what gets me out of bed in the morning? Like, what do I want to do? And and that was a really um, just hard, painful season of having to stop doing a lot so that I could finally focus. Yeah. And so I say about two years ago, we decided, Brian and I decided as a couple, as a team, as a married couple, as everything, we're going to we're gonna move away from our main source of revenue mm -hmm. and we're going to go for reaching moms with cameras and inspiring and empowering them. And, and we're going to try to get a TV show. <laughs> That's great. Well, this, this, is real, no, this is significant because, honestly, as you're describing that journey, uh, that's still, you're, you're very much in the middle of. Yeah. Um, what I'm struck by is, even before photography, you know, when, when you wrote your first book, and then the kind of impact that had on so many women internationally, and, yeah. and obviously nationally too, and then photography and how, you know, what's fun about this dialogue, just so you guys know, is me and I, we've known each other for a long time, and Brian. Yeah, a long time. And, um, even in the photo world, just having the chance to to be at events like WPPI and be speaking and representing companies and different things like that, it's been really, it's, it, there's an interesting fraternity of friends that we, we see each other regularly. And mm -hmm. um, now, now having been at it for about a decade, yeah. it's, 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 it's exciting in a new way, like not exciting like, oh wow, we're doing these things, but more like we're all doing new things and there's an evolution yeah. of where we're going and why. And it seems like for you in particular, and I can relate to this on some level, but writing or your camera, or these are all tools in your tool belt mm -hmm. that you're applying for a particular, even television, like that mm -hmm. seems like a tool that yeah. you can apply for a particular end, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is empowering women. And yeah. that, that is a remarkable commitment. And the reason it seems like a commitment to me is because you're willing to say no to some tools yeah. for the sake of the commitment right. if, if the tool doesn't isn't as effective as other tools could be. Does that make sense? Uh, oh, absolutely. Because I remember, you know, if I was really going to do this mm -hmm. and and I was going to be honest about it and I have integrity with it, mm -hmm. well, then I don't, I don't need to be Sony's high-end wedding person. Right. And it's like, you know, and I mean, I don't know if that sounds like weird or not, but you work so hard to get somewhere, right. and then you're just like all of a sudden. And so, so I, you know, I represent their their portrait work and their family and baby's work, but really, like Brian and I had been speaking for a handful of years about wedding high end wedding photography, right. and so to like, but at the same time, like if I, but I am not pursuing that, and we're not going to be intentional about that. So, really, somebody else should have that. Like well, I don't. And, and, and Sony was okay either way because right. there was enough wedding portfolio for me to give them. But it just felt like, you know, no, we have to, like, if we're really going to be true to this, mm -hmm. then then let's, like, prune even where it's hard <laughs> to prune. Well, for sure. Well, you're creating more space. I mean, I, Yeah, I, it's creating more space, yeah. The, the idea <laughs> of, of um, I, don't, I don't know how to put it quite well, but this idea of not just pruning, but integrity like when you're one of the dynamics that I think happened for happens for a lot of folks is when opportunity comes more opportunity comes and mm -hmm. it's tempting to just go oh I want more oh yes 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 right and then all of a sudden you're strung out yeah and and that being strung out actually doesn't serve what you got into it for the first place for right and you have to begin to say now if you're gonna maintain like when those pressures are coming in like do you want to do this too and do you want to yeah. do this too and do you want to do this too oh and there's money attached and it's a great opportunity that and the reason I think this is so relevant for anyone who's listening to this yeah. is you still have to find that center. So this idea of, in, of integrity, of like finding that center point yeah. where you're true to yourself. Talk a little bit about that because it seems like that would be something that for folks who are, who are maybe watching and they, they, they are not on television. Right. And they, they might disqualify from themselves from that conversation, but it's still critical for anybody to find that center. Oh, totally. I think that any time you are trying to build your dream mm -hmm. you are you are now living an extreme life mm -hmm. and so now how do you find how do you find your balance what do you mean extreme life what does that mean well i think that when you're i think 
that so much of the population doesn't put effort into building their dream. Mm. So you're already now a minority. Got it. And so you already feel like you're swimming upstream. And then you don't know, like, what to quit doing, what to keep doing. So then for a while you do everything, mm. and then you start sinking. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? And so, I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, that resonates. It's a big deal not to burn out. For me, it's a big deal in five years not to burn out. Mm. So, because I, I mean, we still have a long ways to go. Mm. And I just feel like, man, it's not okay for me to finally maybe get there in three to five years. But now I'm like completely useless. Mm. So, we actually hired a business coach this summer who spent three intense months with me. She came and lived with us for a couple days. Oh my gosh. And observed our family culture. And I was like, oh big deal. Bright are happy, kids are happy. What's she gonna see? And right. by the end of the first 24 hours, I was like a complete wreck because I was like, She's saying, <laughs> I don't want you to see any of this. But it was so like eye opening and our, um, our mission in it was to to find sustainable energies in my life because oh. my life needed to become sustainable and at the pace I was moving at, right. it wasn't it sustainable. Was sustainable. Right. And I think whether I think if you're starting out your business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. Well, every, <laughs> every entrepreneur, on some level, in the idea of like, I get in banners all the time around balance and what does that mean for mm -hmm. people, and, and one of the things that. I'm struck by is, that, is uh, to choose a different metaphor besides balance because balance for me is like something versus something. Yeah. If they're going to balance. So if, I, my, if I'm married uh, and my kids and I'm in Vegas for a trade show, how can those be in balance? Well, really, right. that means they're in competition. Right. And, and I'm wrestling with a, with a metaphor of marriage. Like, well, I'm actually, I need to figure out a way to marry my wife and my kids and yeah. my work in such a way that it, like you say, is sustainable. Sustainable. And, and that that does take a degree of consciousness to, you know, where am I getting life? And yeah. How, how can I how can I build that into wherever I'm at, regardless of whether I have a big win, like you, you get yeah. the big kahuna for what you're going for, or you don't get it, you're still sustained. That's remarkable to me. Talk more about that. Well, I think that, I think that. Like what what, so, are, some of, what are some of the things that you discovered in terms of how you you're sustained? Well. Well, let me say this thing first okay. because before I forget it, because I think that a lot of us, when we hear the term starving artist, we think of someone who's not like making money or a profit, but the, That's interesting. But I think starving artists, like the epidemic is really artists that are not feeding themselves inspiration, creativity, mm -hmm. and then they're expecting to like put out, put out, put out, mm -hmm. and like produce, produce, and make money, and make money, and it's like, it, it's not, it, we're asking so much of ourselves. Yeah. So that's kind of what I came to her for. I was like, I I feel like we're, we're doing such great things, and we're breaking new ground, and I mean, such incredible opportunities, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna burn out in four to five years, if not sooner. Right. So one of the things that she noticed is uh, how big of an issue guilt was in my life, mm. and how it's kind of like my scapegoat, because mm. if I feel guilty, then I don't have to be responsible. Mm. <laughs> like, I'm just kind of like out of the equation. Mm. And yet what that was doing is it was paralyzing me emotionally, it was paralyzing totally. me on several different levels. Instead of just getting in right relationship with myself, yeah. getting in right relationship with others when I felt guilty. Uh, and, and so, I mean, there were so many things. One thing that she, uh, one like real tangible thing was she was like, you guys need a big family calendar in like a main part of your house because in just sitting, and, and it wasn't like she was sitting at her dining table like taking, taking notes, right? no, I mean she was, she was very like a much part of our family, but she was like in the last like two and a half, three hours, Blaze, our son who's seven, has probably asked you a dozen times about what's coming up this week and the energy that it takes for you to stop what you're doing and think about the week to try to remember, to try to tell him is completely wasted energy. Right. And so if you just had a family calendar that he could go look at at any time and so she was more about where are there like leaks in your boat of your family culture boat your your life boat and where you know where can we sillies and I always thought that was really funny because I feel like 
a lot of my life has been about huge gashes in a sinking boat. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll find the leaks. Wow. Really? We're calling them leaks? So, <laughs> I thought they were called holes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> huge, like, sinking. We actually have um, like a new boat. Can we have a new boat? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why are there so many holes in the first exactly. place? Right, right. Well, one thing that she said to me about motherhood, too, is because uh, I'm sure there's yeah. tons, tons of moms watching, is because uh, you know we Brian and I travel together and and so that's that's a big commitment as a family because one of us is not staying home with right. the kids right that's right and, we, and it's very much in contrast to how Tammy and I do it like yeah so and it's just different models but that's okay so keep talking yeah so there can be a lot of opportunity for guilt in my life so what you're telling me is my way is the right way. <laughs> And your way is the wrong way, and yeah. you want to feel guiltier about it. No, that's not totally. what I'm saying. I got it. Sorry, my bad. Sorry. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, and so that was interesting because she sat down with me one night uh, when she was with us, and she, she looked at me and she said, as I watch you interact with your kids, I feel like you you respond as if you're pouring love into them and it's just running out the bottom. And, like, you've got to refill their cup every day. And she's like, Mira, the cup has no holes at the bottom. And you, when you're home, you fill it and you fill it and you fill it. And they drink from it when you're gone. Mm -hmm. And it sustains you and it sustains them. And you are, you are living as if every single day when you put them to bed, mm -hmm. their cup's empty. And it's never empty. Like, and I, that was so huge for me. Yeah, I totally get it. Because it just shifted in how I interacted with them. It yeah. shifted in how I saw myself. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the road, it's been a long road of how do I be a mom and pursue something I'm passionate about. I quit working when the kids are, you know, I used to only work when they were in bed after hours and like, oh, I don't want to take away time from them and I don't want them to feel like their mom's not available. Oh my gosh, like I finally like realized what a lie that was mm. that my kids need to see me build a dream and they need to see my down days and my good days so that someday when they're building their own, they know. They have a context. Yeah. yeah. And I remember like it was this, uh, like probably like six months ago, uh, we had been working on this deal for several months, almost a year. And it all fell through. Mm. And it was so like, I was, and we, we homeschooled the kids, and so I was supposed to do history that day. <laughs> and I sat down at the table and I just started crying. And I couldn't, I just, I was so broken over it. And just like, I can't, because I think as parents, and um, I know, especially as a mom, like, if I'm taking time away from my kids, it better count for something. Mm -hmm. And so to feel like nine months is down the tube and it didn't count for anything, um, so I'm sitting there at the table crying, and I told the, and I just looked at the kids, and they're like, "Do you still want to do history, mom?" <laughs> and I looked at them, and I'm like, "You know what? Someday you're gonna build a dream, and you're gonna have days like today when you just feel like you completely took the wrong turn, and nothing makes sense. But like that's just that's part of it. it that is, is it. what it is. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're on the wrong road. It doesn't mean you took a wrong turn. It actually means you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Some days are just really, really hard. Yeah. But you." guys know that we have really great days too and and so that's it's interesting I feel like I'm I'm still trying to unpack this what does it mean to have not only just like be a mom or a parent but what does it mean to like raise up a new generation mm -hmm. that is going to be able to sit on our shoulders mm -hmm. because they saw courage in their parents mm -hmm. man there's a resonance in so much of what you're saying I mean I when I think the, the cup thing in particular, I remember when I was in therapy for an extended period of time, we talked about broken cups all the time, whole, like whole holes in the cups, yeah. and fractured cups or whatever. Yeah. And it's such an easy projection, especially if you come from a context where you probably, you know, I, I know, I'll speak for myself, I had, yeah. I had leaky cups, you know, it didn't all yeah. stick in the cup. <laughs> and and uh, mm -hmm. it's amazing to me how, and especially when I see you guys raise your kids, like having been at your home, like eating in the backyard and seeing how just honest you are with your kids. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's developmentally appropriate and it's really like present, like you're in it with them. They're, yeah. it's part, they're all part of the unit. Yeah. And I just think of they don't have the same burden. Like if it was my context, my kids don't have the same burden I had. 
even though it's tempting for me to think universally, well, if right. I was burdened with that, then therefore they must be too. And that's just not so. Right. Especially if you made a decision like you guys have to just raise your kids different than maybe right. how, how you have this, the kind of life that you had growing up. And yeah, yeah. That's remarkable. And I, what, just I say this over and over again, but I know you guys are at home. And some of you right now mm-hmm. are literally probably by yourself watching this thing going like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I thought I was the only one. And yeah. you're someone like, like I just found a tribe of people, and they like I'm not alone, you mm-hmm. know. And you're not, and you need to know that because I think that um, I love that that dynamic of of just having a resonance with especially the moms. Like I have three daughters. Yeah, you and, do. Yes, I do. Beautiful. And they're cute, <laughs> and I'm in trouble. And um, but I I just think of like. I think I look at Tammy and just how she how she does her life and it's it's really it's just hard to be human and it's a particular kind of hard to be a woman mm-hmm. and just like it's a particular hard to be a guy mm-hmm. and I just think of so much of what's on like women are under uh, in this culture in particular it's such a unique set of time and circumstances and yeah and to and sometimes I just think I think of Tammy like she's just not supported where she needs to be sometimes and mm-hmm. I, I I don't want that for my girls I want them to stand and thrive and for them to be yeah. all they were made to be and if anyone's at home and they're hearing this and they're like I want that too but I gave up that dream a long time ago yeah like what I'm hearing you is like you're saying well actually despite any circumstances you've been in yeah. there's real hope to yeah. go and, to go to have a new day yeah I mean well and I think it all comes down to don't you think it all comes down to us having to face what we feel like our self-worth is? I think that the biggest thing is is that you have to face whether or not you feel worthy of something. And I think pursuing uh, is that we have a huge <laughs> CSI. <laughs> It's Las Vegas. It's no big deal. No, we're fine. No. I think that pursuing pursuing a dream or a passion, it just, it's this tug of war of feeling unworthy to do it. Mm. And uh, I feel like to be able to do it and sustain it and to, to not burn out in a few years is to take care of yourself. Mm. And so one thing, like she said, is, you, you know, Mira, as, as much as you travel, like, you need to go away for two nights every two months. And... And I, I know it's another trip away from your kids. I know you don't want me to, you know, hear me say that to you. But like you, you need to just like go somewhere and completely be alone, because you're giving so much. Like like women do, we give and give and give until we have nothing left. Mm-hmm. And then when are you filling back up? You know. And so that was that was really hard the first time I did that. And now like I wait. It's, well, it's a rhythm. Yeah. And now and, and exactly. And so what are these rhythms that that we can develop? But um. It's, so it's funny you say that. So this trip for Las Vegas, yeah. no, normally I fly in on Sunday night, and then it's a whirlwind, and then I yeah. go home. Most of the whirlwind, I feel totally crappy that I'm not. I feel actually like the whirlwind has me more than I have it. Yeah, it, it just takes me up and go. And um, this trip in particular, because I got some feedback from a clinical psychologist, that he said that I should, given my temperament and different things, that it would be really resourceful for me every single day to get grounded somewhere, somewhere. It's like, so get, get alone. And I, I see myself as an extrovert, so I'm like, that uh-huh. seems weird. I would be introverted. And he goes, no, you're not getting it. It's not about extroverted and introverted. It's grounding. It's grounding. It's like getting a sense of why you're doing what you're doing, because then yeah. you do really well. But when you feel you like you don't know what your purpose is, you flounder. Yeah. And it was super, res- and so for Vegas, yeah. I came out a day early. I just drove, and I was like, this is so weird. Why would I go to Las Vegas a day early? And right. I checked in, and I put all my stuff out, and I got sorted, and I'm away for my kids for a whole other day, but this has been a radically different you experience. Grounded. Oh yeah, like yeah. I'm actually choosing what I'm doing. I know where I'm going from thing to thing, and I'm so excited to go home. But it's not like guilty going home. Like it's excited to go home. Yeah. And it's such a different. And I'm not even a woman. So yeah. Explain that to me. How does that work? <laughs> well, I think you do have the. No. Uh, it's true. <laughs> it's true. You're not the first to say it. You won't be the last. I got it. <laughs> no, I think it's really. I think that's awesome though that it put because that's kind of what she was saying to me and I mean every morning uh, almost every morning the first thing I do is I get up and I go for a walk mm-hmm. and that's and, and it's not an exercise walk it's right. not you know it's just a <laughs> let you, you ever try to like double down like this is going to be an exercise walk and I'm going to read the bible and then I'm going to get <laughs> you know do yeah. my hot drink and then and I'll do the taxes while I'm doing it and, yeah, so. you know what's really like had a huge impact on me and it's, it's coming up on a year anniversary is uh, 
hot, like Bikram yoga, hot yoga. Oh, really? I have not gone. I, I've been like going to the gym and getting on a treadmill for 20 years. Uh -huh. I've not gone back since I started a year ago. Huh. Like it's, and it's all like about, it, okay, so it's all about 26 poses and holding them in like 105 degree heat. What, but, not 106, not 104? Or whatever okay. it is. But what is so like transforming for me about this is that it forces you to exercise this muscle that we don't, which is keeping yourself focused on one thing. Huh. Because you can't keep your balance and hold the pose if your mind wanders. And so it forces you to like dial everything into keeping this leg straight, your standing leg, and that's it for 90 seconds. And I kind of just, it's blowing my mind because mm. I've been realizing like how I don't practice that, just yeah. keeping focused on one thing. And I so easily like I'm flustered, my mind's going a million different directions. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. That's fascinating. Yeah, it seems so interesting. The folks who I have esteem for in the business world or just in creativity in general, mm -hmm. they seem to be people who have a radical ability to say no to the wrong things that aren't for them even though they're great things. And they have an amazing ability to focus, mm -hmm. like consistently. Yeah. And there's so many other folks, and I feel like I'm one of these other folks so often, who just um, might get a lot of opportunities, could be skilled in certain categories, mm -hmm. but because I, I might lack one or two of the other things, or this, this core focus and ability to say no, same thing, I guess, yeah. two sides of the same coin, yeah. um, how, how disjointing that can be. Mm -hmm. um, so it, what I'm hearing you say is like, any exercise, whether it be the yoga thing that you're doing, or a daily morning thing, or or a retreat, retreat every... or find, just finding space. Yeah, and that you are worth that, hmm. you know, and and. I'm sure. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're worth that. <laughs> no, I think that. So here's the thing. Here's that, that's the, here, powerful. This I is mean... what I think that dream building is all about: is is finding freedom. Hmm for who we were meant to be because I feel like that as I pursue a dream what like it, it just doesn't matter whether I want it to be this way or not it just is mm. I'm confronted with every single fear mm. that I would rather not encounter mm. and the only way the only path to get closer to the dream I have is to deal with that fear is mm. to deal and so the other day I was just like I wonder if it's actually not <laughs> about the dream that I'm building, but it's really about me being set free and finding freedom mm. in this life and who who I'm meant to be and who I'm worth being and the love I'm worth receiving and the love I want to give in return. Mm. And and so for whatever reason, my makeup, it's I get to unravel that through trying to build a dream. Mm. You know, but I don't know. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, I, I don't know that it has to be mutually exclusive, but there's some core, there's really a key relationship in what you're describing that, yeah. that's really striking to me. And yeah. So, so let's get super practical for fiction. Okay. So for folks who are at home and they're hearing this and, and they're, they're touched by it and they want to do something like today. So they're just kind of getting blasted with this information. It's kind of a new conversation for them. Yeah. And they're in some set of circumstances that they, they feel stuck in. Mm -hmm. How, what, what are some first steps for them to get unstuck? and get closer to like going after what is in them. Because a fundamental assumption in all this is people have a dream mm -hmm. some, somewhere in here mm -hmm. that, that is begging to be actualized and it's, it's not out yet. And right. as people are listening to this, if you're in a conversation with somebody, what do you say like, okay, over the next 90 days, if you want to begin to, to get into this process more intentionally, what do you say that they do? Whether it be with their business and their personal life, any category. Well, I mean, because everybody's different in how they it process, is. right? Yeah. Information or take information in or what's going on inside of their head. For me, it's writing. And so mm -hmm. every, like, every other, other day, yeah, I try, to, I try to write three pages in the morning. and I think you put me on to Artist Way forever ago. Really? Yeah. Is that, is that kind of an mm -hmm. exercise? Uh -huh. Because I feel like, and I think it's really magical in that it's three pages because it takes about a page and a half to get all the noise who, who, out. What's the woman's name? Who was Julia that? Cameron. Julia Cameron, and it's called Artist's Way. It's kind Artist's of a classic, classic book on mm -hmm. the creative process. And by the way, side note, um, Todd Henry's Accidental Creative is actually a cool resource too. Uh -huh. But but this, this thing called Daily Pages is one of the exercises she talks about early in the book, which is a daily discipline of just yeah. whatever, don't plan it out, don't have a plot line, just 
ugh, three pages every day. Three pages, just keep your hand moving. And I'm always amazed at what I discover the last page and a half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's never what I expect. So I think that... I think saying it out loud, saying what your dream is or your idea is, saying it out loud to someone you can trust. I uh -huh. think taking it out of hiding. Uh -huh. uh, and I think letting ourselves off the hook that this dream that I have right now is like my life's mission because I mean, we, like you were saying earlier, we it's fun to see how we've evolved. And I never would have thought like, TV would be something. Right. It's so interesting to me because with my first book, we did like 40 national TV interviews. It never once in any of those interviews crossed my mind to do TV. That's but it wasn't the timing yet. Right. There was so much more for me to still learn and gain through the f photography industry mm -hmm. than that that would finally like I'd be awakened to that, I guess. You right. know? Right. So just so just start somewhere mm -hmm. without like pressure for that somewhere to be the end. Got it. Okay. So it, that's I feel like we're talking really vague, though. Well, I don't no, know. well what I'm hearing you say, I mean, just in, in kind of raw, <laughs> raw categories, it's a differentiator between not making it so much about the end result, but more the process of the result. That mm -hmm. staying in process, staying in rhythm, staying in, like, this is a discipline. Even that three pages a day thing, like, there's work involved yeah. to have the insights come out and begin to have language around what you're about and why and where you're going. Yeah. But to not, if you get so hung, hamstrung on, it needs to look a certain kind of way, so my process needs to be building towards this end. Right. That could be really debilitating. Yes. As opposed to like, that'll take care of itself. Don't mm -hmm. worry so much about that. Worry about getting this out on a regular basis, is what I'm yeah. hearing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just, and also to have an awareness that uh, fear and is, 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 resistance. is there the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Fear never goes away. Yeah. Fear and doubt are the traveling companions yep. the whole way through. Totally. <laughs> yeah, so I love to say that to people. Like, I love to it's, say... Well, it's free because they're not, they're not alone again. They're well, like, oh, that, yeah. that's, not, uh, that's not just me who's scared. It's not just... Yeah, the, and if you knew, like, like if I, like, literally, like, if we just said, if you just knew fear and doubt were going to be with you for your whole journey, what would you do? Because I think a lot of us wait for the fears to like die down or the yeah, doubts like not to be so loud. But like, if you just knew, like, in front. Uh, is that a, is that a reasonable pr response? Like, if they're going to be with me for, I'm asking myself the question. I'm like, well, the fear is going to be here forever. Do I face my fear? Do I try to kill my fear? Do I make friends with my fear? Like, what? What do I, you? What do you yeah, I mean, for me, like sometimes I feel like, uh, I mean, sometimes I feel like I wake up in the morning to fear and doubt already in the debate <laughs> around me. And so for me, it's like going for a walk. And by the end of that 45-minute morning walk, mm -hmm. it's just not as loud as it was. Okay, so we had uh, this guy named Julian Smith in the show a few months okay. back. And he actually, I think it was coincidence because he was actually in this mindset already, but he published a book called Flinch. Okay. And Flinch is all about fear actually is a compass. Uh -huh. Like when you, whatever you're scared about, pursue it. Oh, like go go after it, and what you're going to discover is purpose, and yeah. the, 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 the and maybe the, I don't want to equivocate on the language, but on some level, the dream, like a, your yeah. particular version of it. Yeah. And some of what I'm hearing you say is giving people permission to not be, to not make the fear part bad. It's just I, yeah. So I think fear is uh, definitely something that you can either try to make go away but i don't think that that ever really is going to happen <laughs> so, or you just you just keep, continue to move forward and not give it maybe not give power. it the power right. that it wants to have from you mm. i guess right well that resonates with me because whenever i've acknowledged fears out loud it disempowers the fear yeah it all just, it's like i'm scared of something under under the under the bed turn the light on look at it Oh, I'm not scared anymore. Okay, But it's right. scary to turn the light on. It's scary to, to see what's really there. Well, but here's the funny thing, though. In the midst of this whole conversation is that if there's anything I've learned over the last 20 years of me building a, a, you know, a mission that empowers women and helps them know they're not alone, is that every single time I have fears about what's waiting for me in the future, when I actually get there, those fears are never there. Hmm. Those fears are never there. That's what blows my mind every time. Like, I feel like uh, I, you know, I talk to a lot of women, uh, you know, all over, and I hear the same thing. Like, if, well, if I have a business, uh, how's this going to take away from my kids? How's right. this going to take away from me? What if it doesn't work? Blah, 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 blah. Well, when they actually get there, 
none of that stuff is there. None, it's it, none of it's waiting for them. And so, I I don't know. I, I, well, I hear that, and I go, well, so then what are you waiting for? <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if if you love Mira as much as I do, uh, you need to connect with her, and there's a lot of ways to do that. Obviously, miraco.com, M-E-R-A-K-O-H.com, uh -huh. yep. at Mirako on, on the Twitter. At Mirako on Twitter, and then I have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. That's I spend more time on that probably in the blog than, than anything else. Got it. So, yeah. And the blog's easy to find from miraco.com. Yep, yep. Okay. That's, That's pretty much it. Yeah. Great. Well, I encourage you to reach out. And if this was beneficial for you, please be sure to say thanks to her and, and become her friend. Um, also, oh, I have a book. And <laughs> you do. I should have should have mentioned that. We have the same publisher. <laughs> that might have been wise. Sorry, Julie. My bad. <laughs> um, we're, we're, Brian's running to grab the book right now. That's helpful. Um, Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> I am not cutting this out of a discipline because I, I deserve this moment of embarrassment. Well, um, so we'll, we'll pull this up in just one second. Um, the workshops, if there's opportunities yes. for that, where do, they, where do they go for that? Well, they could just go to miraco.com and hit the workshops tab, and that shows, like, what cities we're coming to in the next six months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And, it, and it's just women. Sorry. Oh, I can't come. Oh, Brian gets to come. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so go to Amazon. It's right here, my person. <laughs> go to Amazon right now. Type in Mirako. Your baby in pictures. I mean, I can tell you the title. Well, that... <laughs> here it is. Where is it? Okay. Oh. I think you gave it away today. Oh. Dang it. Okay. Give away my copy. Thanks. Well, it's called Your Baby in Pictures. <laughs> it, got up to it. Si it got up to 65 on Amazon. That's fantastic. Yeah, and it's and it's staying strong, going strong. It's almost been out for a year. Wow. But it's uh, 40 photo recipes, and basically it's uh, just the f like a cookbook. The photo and then the recipe of how to make that photo happen. And I've just uh, gotten the best. I mean, it's become the the staple baby shower gift mm. it's become the 40 ideas for women that are doing baby shoots and and the 40 photo recipes are all based on developmental milestones that babies go through over mm. a year mm. and so i've had women email me and tell me that they showed the book to their client and had them pick three different recipes to do for their photo oh, shoot that's and so it's really fun and then and then post your results on my facebook page because that's really fun too oh that's great mm -hmm. so go there now please <laughs> I'm in real trouble. If you don't go there right now, we're in trouble. And one last thing, uh, always thank Adorama for making this possible. I really appreciate you guys for, for doing that, and shout-outs to them are always great. So thanks, friend. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay. Bye.